Welcome to So You Want to Be a Councillor, where you'll get a realistic glimpse into what it's like to be elected to represent your community on one of Queensland's 77 councils. It takes a special person to both serve and represent their community. That's exactly what the councillors on Queensland's 77 councils do day in and day out. It's a big job, but someone's got to do it. I'm Rob Hazel, and in this episode, we have the privilege of catching up with Councillor Denise Geyer, who has been actively involved in representing and tirelessly advocating for her community on Palm Island. Denise is a grandmother of 16 and has been a councillor for two terms with the Palm Island Aboriginal Shire Council, and has also held roles within council, including as Deputy CEO and Acting CEO. She tells us how she's managing to balance both her roles as councillor and as coordinator of the Palm Island Community Justice Group, along with family life. Hi, I'm Denise Geyer. I'm the councillor with the Palm Island Aboriginal Shire Council, and this is my second term in local government. Denise, you worked inside council as a council employee for about 13 years before deciding to put your hand up to become an elected representative. Tell us a little bit about that time in your career. It was a good time and and I managed to gain a position as a deputy um, CEO and then I also then was put in the position of the acting CEO when there were some um, issues around the current CEO uh, just leaving the island and um, basically leaving the, the administration. So I stepped up to that and it was challenging um, I really found the workload to be huge and you really needed to understand and know your legislations, especially the Act. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed my, my time within the administration arm of council. And then 2010, I, I resigned and I wanted to just have some time away because I'd done 13 years with um, council um then I thought that I'd come back and um, run for the council elections and in 2016. I honestly did not believe that I would get elected. <laughs> I was able to be voted in by my people and I was the only female and that was very challenging with um, four male councillors. There was a real transition then. You, you were clearly having a a long and successful career working for the council and during a, a, a period of transition. But but what was it, Denise, that prompted you to actually run for council after that time? I guess after 13 years sitting within council and, and seeing how the organisation travelled and walking away after those 13 years and being on the outside for three years, looking in, I could see that there were still those gaps in services and there was things that still needed to improve within council admit infrastructure uh, capital works programs um, we needed to have more decent parks and gardens and the roads needed fixing so you, you see I, I tend to realize that there's a shift in my thinking and in the way i operated as a community person because when I was employed by the council, I was very defensive of the council, obviously. Um, uh, and in my role as you know, acting CEO, you don't want to fail. You want to be seen as a good guy. So I, I was very um, defensive and I w- would make that very loud and clear. But um, since I'm walking away from that position and that role and a very senior role within the community, I made a lot of enemies, by the way, <laughs> lots of enemies. But it's, I found it was very lonely at the top and I needed to get out. I needed to just have this time out. I've done what I've had to do. But then looking back towards council and looking in from the outside and seeing that, gee, Denise, that part I was being there all that time, you didn't even see it. Anyway, I, I needed, I felt that I still had some positives to give my people. I, I had to recharge my batteries and refocus my thinking, um, grow up a little bit more and realise that I still can get some skin in the game and um, have a go at local government as a councillor. There's a few points to touch on there, Denise. Firstly, I, I guess the surprise with, with, with being elected. After having worked in the council, how do you then prepare for such a different role? What, how, do you, how do you make that transition and, and make it successfully? How do you prepare yourself to be a councillor? That um, 
that came when we were informed as candidates that we needed to um, do some training. And I, I thought, oh my goodness, we are the most trained people on the planet. But anyway, I'll go along with the training. But I know any, everything anyway, because I work there and I know how the council operates. So I came in a little bit um, of a bullheaded and thought that I knew better and I knew more than everyone else because I had been given that um, upper hand of being on, you know, employed by the council. But through the local government um, department, there was an opportunity for councillors to conduct, attend some training and participate in that training. And it was, um, you had to do the training before you could actually run for council. I had to make some changes around the, and understand the conflicts of interest and those material personal interests and the separation of powers that things have changed. Like it's really changed now. Um, you know, when you're on the inside and you're, you're telling elected councillors, you're advising them, now these are the changes, this is the new legislation now. But when you're in that position and you're giving that and you're making a stand and then when now, I found that I was on the other end, on the receiver's end of being told that if you want to be on the council, you have to make sure that you understand. So I, there was a shift for me, but I had to learn that, gee, this is really serious business. Mum of three, you're a grandmother to 16. Yes, I am. You've got a lot on your plate there. And I know you're also involved in the Palm Island Community Justice Group, but how do you manage to achieve a work-life balance? My day starts at 5.30 in the morning. It's every day, even on weekends. I start at 5.30 and I know that I prepare myself mentally for my um, part-time role as a community justice group coordinator. And from 8.30 to 12.30, my focus is on my job as a coordinator. Uh, I'm very... Um, discipline and structured and well organized when it comes to planning my days or planning my weeks um, i make sure that i would anybody wants to meet with me or have um, some discussions with me around the bridge down the road or the horses that keep running onto the airstrip i'm happy to have those conversations but i'll give them a time of after one o'clock um, I, I make it quite clear whenever I attend community meetings or interagency um, meetings or some woman's yarning circle that, but that the community justice group has been invited to where the topic of the council will come up and there'll be, there'll be someone complaining about the water doesn't taste nice or the garbage man didn't come and pick up my rubbish today. Um, those little things do arise sometimes. And that all eyes are on me, but I make it quite clear that I'm sitting here as the um, community justice group uh, coordinator, but I'm happy to pass on your, here's the phone number for the CEO, you can give him a call. And I, I do carry around those little business cards for the CEO, because I want to make it clear, because I understand that there are people that still have needs, they don't shut off just because, you know, Denise Guy has got a structured plan of her a weekly planner. Um, I respect that. I respect my constituents. Um, but once I um, get home at five o'clock today, of the day, I'm then with in my garden with my dogs and then my grandchildren will come. One has just come into the Zoom meeting with me right now because the school bus dropped her off here. How difficult is it for you to just switch off? It can be very difficult, I'll be honest with you. It is difficult, especially living in a discrete community such as Palm Island, where we don't have a 24-hour medical centre or a 24-hour shop that we could go to, where we are, our services are very limited. We don't have a functioning, we don't even have a bank on the island. We um, have a post office that um, opens when they feel like opening. I've also learned to not beat myself down because 
I couldn't get that horse from st stopping to run across the road. Um, I've always told myself that it is what it is. That's my go-to saying that gets me and reminds me that, Denise, you can't change everything. Um, I can't change the world. I can't change people's thinking. And I tell myself that we have to look after ourselves and self-care. And that's where I get my strength and my confidence from my grandchildren. And just being at home in my garden and just enjoying the quietness. But I still get the phone call at eight o'clock at night or, you know, I'll get a phone call on the weekend about some council business. And I'm fine to follow that up. But I won't go and try and get the shovel and dig the trench for them. I've heard that you, um, you've, also, you've also managed to, to put up a, a nice fence for yourself too. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I did that some time ago because I wanted to just have that separation. I wanted to um, be able to come home and in, the, in the privacy of my own house and just relax. Um, we lock our gates for that purpose, the big gates. And just to let people know that oh, the gates are closed, so we'll come and see you tomorrow or something. Um, I, but look, don't get me wrong, I still get the messages on social media and I'll get a private message if somebody wants to know if they've got caught next week, Tuesday, and um, or somebody will message me just the other night, a young girl wanted to get a application for a birth certificate. So these, these little, um, these things do come, but it's how I manage them and I'm not going to go out there and try and save the world. Um, we need to remind our people that there's a, that codependency on others needs to stop. Uh, we have to stand up ourselves as individuals. We can help each other. We can support each other. And, and we can make sure that, you know, your needs are being met. But at the end of the day, it's about also self-care. Um, I love my walks along the beach in the afternoon. Um, go for my swim with my grandchildren. Um, yeah, just getting out in the outdoors. That's how I bring in the balance of work life, my home life, and my recreational activities as well. I imagine you're prioritising a lot better than you did when you first were elected as councillor. That must have been very difficult if you're watching kids and, and grandchildren uh, growing up and, and trying to juggle the responsibilities as a mother and a grandmother as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, when you first get into somewhere, you think, oh, that's it, you roll up your sleeve and you're just going to get in there and we're going to fix all the poros and we're going to fix that, cut that tree down and we're going to remove that old building and... Oh, yeah, well, oh, don't worry. I had my wish list and I had a thousand things to do. But um, I found being on council that it doesn't work like that. Um, we prioritise with our um, planning, with our operational plans, our corporate plans and, um, and working through that process of, the, of that governance side. Um, because I also learned too the mistake that when you go and campaign <laughs> when you're campaigning and you got your call flutes out and you and you vote for me because I'm going to fix up the the education system well getting elected then I realized oh I shot myself in the foot there um, I realized that no you can't really go that yeah, ca carry on like that Denise but um, but working with with it the education system, working with the department, working with the schools, working with the local PNC. That's what I enjoy. And I realise that, okay, it's just Rome was not built in a day. Take a step back, breathe, get your support groups, get your elders together. And I had to come in in the second term with a strategy. I had to stay in this, in this term now that I'm currently in. I had to refocus what didn't I achieve much or do much last term and what can I achieve this term? I've come up with a strategy around focusing more on community engagement, um, getting the support of the elders, young people, especially young mothers, talking that one-on-one, -on -one, the yarning circles, 
getting their ideas, trashing out ideas around what colour do you think that building should be? And that one-on-one -on -one consultation with community, I found was more benefiting, more productive and more meaningful. Um, and I value that and, and I believe my people appreciated that um, rather than just sitting in the office, making the decision without talking to those that put us in that office. What would you say uh, are some of your greatest achievements as a councillor? I would say some of the greatest achievements, of not just myself as an individual councillor, but us as a team with the developments of the retail precinct, the new um, infrastructure, the new suburbs, the amount of new houses over 24 new houses that we've constructed and now young people are actually living in and enjoying. And being a part of those successes, um, the foreshore redevelopment area where all the tidal surges now can only come so far because we've got this lovely, beautiful foreshore development. There's a footpath there, a concrete footpath. There's, there's solar lit lights where you can just enjoy your afternoon walks. Um, there are now, there's a skate park, there's basketball courts, just being in a team and being a part of that, looking at that development and that infrastructure. What can women bring to politics from your perspective? You could agree to disagree on something, but yet we still come back and have that cup of tea or sit down and still have that yarn about something else. Women have the influence. I believe it was my strength in influencing in a positive way to get my colleagues, male colleagues, to support women's sports. We had um, the netball complex that structure built and we're going to open it in the next couple of months. Um, but getting our men to listen and understand women in, even in politics, just, just women talking about politics. I think being an Aboriginal community such as Palm Island, it's always been the men that ran this community. When you look at the history, when you look at the, the honour board of our, um, our forefathers and all those councillors that have gone before me when, when I was a kid, a lot of them were all the men in those in roles as the chairmen of the day. Um, I would say to women, in Queensland, if you're ever wanting to run for local government, I'd say go for it. I would encourage you because women have the strength, the and we think differently to how men think, and we're more passionate, I find. Denise, as a First Nations woman, what advice would you be giving to, to anyone who is considering coming in and running for council? One of the important advice that I would be sharing and um, giving to any women and especially first nations women is when you put your hand up and you nominate for council always start with taking your family with you on the journey it's important and that's something that i've learned i've learned to this second term around to take my family on this journey with me so that i've got the support and the love and care of my family as well thanks denise and thanks for listening to so you want to be a counselor if you're feeling inspired to represent your community and considering running for council, go to statedevelopment.qld.gov.au slash get elected. There's a link in the show notes. If you like today's episode or any of our other episodes, please give us a rating review in your podcast app. 